have reviewed our design and used it to create our option sets and options within DHIS2. We can now use that same design template in order to create our data elements and data element groups. We will break this down into two separate steps. We will focus on creating our data elements first in this initial step. In order to create our data elements, we can select the Data Element tab from within the Maintenance app. For the demonstration, we will create three data elements, sex, pregnant, and height in centimeters. The process for creating the remaining data elements within the program will be exactly the same. In order to create a new data element, click on the plus sign within the data element box. You should have some familiarity with creating data elements from the fundamentals course or through your own experience. After clicking on this button, you will be taken to the data element creation section of the maintenance app. Let's start with creating the data element sex. Note that we won't be going through each individual field that is available within the data element creation section of the maintenance app. However, we have added a link to the documentation that describes each of the fields available when creating data elements in more detail underneath this demonstration within the activity details. We will start off with the name and short name fields. Using your username in the naming conventions again, enter the name and short name as a prefix when we are creating the data element, since these values must be unique in the system. We can also enter the same details in the code field as it is always a good idea to assign your metadata codes. The color and icon options are used for the Android app, so we will not look at this at the moment. If we scroll down within this section, we will see a number of additional fields. The form name is another useful field that you may want to use. This specifies the name of the data element as it will appear within the Capture app of DHIS2 when performing data entry. We could enter sex here in our example so our username does not appear on the data entry page within the Capture app. The domain type is another required field as denoted by the star within the field itself. There are two domain types we can select from. For event and tracker programs, the data element must have the domain type of tracker. This may be a bit confusing as we are creating an event program, not a tracker program. However, the domain type for data elements used in both of these programs is the same. The next required field is the value type. The aggregation type is also a mandatory field. Both of these will automatically get modified when we select the associated option set. In order to see how this works in practice, let us scroll down a little bit more. We can see there is now a field where we can assign the option set to the data element. Let us select the option set. From the dropdown, I can select the option set that I have created. You can see that this automatically adjusts the value type and aggregation type to match the criteria required to make the option set work correctly. With the required information being entered, let us scroll down and click on the Save button in order to save the data element. Let's repeat this process for the pregnant data element. Start off by clicking on the blue plus icon. Now let's enter the data element details. We can scroll down after filling in the name, the short name, and the code, and now select the domain type. We can also fill in the form name. For the value type, we would like yes and no to appear in the form. There is a value type of yes, no, 
that we can assign to this data element. Because this value type is available, we do not need to create an option set for this data element. For the aggregation type, we want to know the total number of yes and no responses. So we will leave it as the sum type. Note that you could also create an option set containing the values yes and no. However, for our purposes in this use case, it is enough to use the value type of yes, no. This is all of the information we need to fill in, so we can now click on save. Next, we will create the data element height in centimeters. Follow the same process by clicking on the blue plus icon and then entering in the relevant details for the data element. We enter in the name, the short name, and the code. We select the domain type. We can also enter in a form name to get rid of the prefix we have given our data element. For this data element, we want the users to be able to enter a positive integer, and we don't think it's necessary to enter a decimal place. Since that is the case, we will select the appropriate value type to allow this type of interaction to occur. From the value type list, I can select positive or zero integer. This means I will not be able to enter decimals in this particular field. In order to see all of the various value types that are available and their effect on what types of values can be stored within a data element, please refer to the documentation that we have linked to in the activity. The aggregation type for this data element should be average. This is to allow us to get an average value for the height when looking at multiple cases. If we were to sum the heights, then we would get a value that is erroneous and not relevant to what we need to review. Once we have finished defining this information, we can scroll down and click on Save. The remaining data elements for the program have already been created and shared with you to add to your program. For example, we can see that there is an ICD-10 diagnosis data element present. This contains the option set for ICD-10. We can insert this directly in our program when we go to create our program. If you would like more practice on creating data elements, please feel free to make additional data elements following the design template that has been provided. I have followed the same process in order to create these remaining data elements. I click on the blue plus symbol in the bottom right corner of data element maintenance. I then provide a name, short name, code, and domain type for the data element. For the name and short name, I will use my username as a prefix at the beginning to keep these names unique. If the data element has an option set, I can assign the option set and the remaining required fields will automatically populate. I can then save the data element. If the data element does not have an option set, I will want to set the value type and aggregation type. For numeric values in Tracker, we can use the value type of positive or zero integer if we do not want any decimals entered, and we can set the aggregation type to average. I can then save the data element after I've entered these details. We have outlined the data element value type for each of the remaining data elements that are used in the activity for this section. This will give you more detail on how to configure each individual data element if you would like more practice in making them within DHIS2. We have made an activity that will allow you to make your own data elements. We have made sure to provide you with enough detail so you can configure each of the data elements that are required for the program, including their value type. This detail is included in the template we have been referencing throughout our demonstration. Give the activity a try before proceeding to the next subsection.